right. Yes, <laughs> finally. <laughs> it happens. Uh, yeah, so I just briefly introduce myself. I am Kitty Young. I uh, my background is in condensed matter physics, and I started my career in some world's giant semiconductor and IT companies, like many many physicists who choose to do science because they they're inspired by the artistic beauty in nature. I also have been doing art on the side. Uh, the two seemingly parallel worlds of science and art have been constantly crossing paths in my life. So right now I work as a senior program manager on quantum computing at Microsoft. My day job allows me to contribute to solving some of the world's largest problems, challenges. However, by doing side projects as a maker, I also realized that uh, there are many more global goals that I can contribute to. My way of solving problems is by combining ideas and methods used in the fields of science, engineering, design, and art, and apply them across industries. Let me show you some early work when I became a maker about seven years ago. At first, I was just making wearable tech fashion as a hobby. In 2017, I posted my very first open source project on Hexter.io. This is a dress that uses the accelerometer on Arduino 101 to detect my gesture and trains the pattern matching engine to memorize the, ge the gesture and recognize it. When I wave my hands in a certain way, a corresponding constellation will show up on the dress. The fabric is also a page from my graphic novel with a scientist and her robot looking into the telescope in the sky area. The constellation would then display. I love making electronics wearable so that the clothes carry additional meaning and functionality that, that are not just decorative fashion. Uh, here is a dress with my hand-painted flowers. It detects my heart rate that controls the blinking of the LEDs like fireflies in the flower field. Of course, not everyone wants to show off their heart rate to the public. But what I wanted to demonstrate here is that we don't need to limit functionalities in our imagination, such as biometrics detection to only medical devices and sportswear. How about some beautiful clothing that we want to wear every day? I've made many other examples like this, uh, like detecting environmental data, such as temperature and air quality embedding solar panels for on-the-go charging Bluetooth interactive glasses. Uh, we've laser fiber into fabrics and a lot more. I made my designs open source so people can learn how to do that, uh, how to build something similar. Because I learned so much from the maker community, I make my project open source as well. So this is one way of contributing back. Uh, however, not everyone is a maker. Uh, a lot of people interested in my designs as where to buy them. I didn't know, I had no idea, how does an independent designer turn their crazy ideas into manufacturable products? Uh, in 2017, when I was still working at Intel, I was asked to design a t-shirt for, uh, for the booth volunteers at Maker Faire. I came up with a really fun wearable robot and a soft circuit, which I had to hand sew. <laughs> But that wouldn't be uh, scalable. That is for 100 people. I wouldn't possibly be able to make them all by my hand. By hand. Uh, while the robot itself is hard, uh, is a hard object, but it is easy to make. So the soft uh, part, soft circuit, was actually the hard part that's difficult to manufacture. We couldn't find any manufacturer that could make them at reasonable cost. So we were not able to make those t-shirts at scale. I could have just stopped there and said to myself, okay, I'm done. I'm just doing this as a hobby and I'm not bothered to know how to manufacture, but I'm just too curious to give up. I then founded a fashion brand especially to explore making fashionable wearable technologies and embedding functionalities into clothing that are useful. It took me a couple of years to convert some of these handmade 
crazy projects into manufacturable products. Just yesterday, we launched a uh, Kickstarter project with many technologies seamlessly embedded into clothes and uh, accessories. We found ways to make flexible LED fabrics and embedded displays for customizing clothing. So here you can see, you can even use the app to change the displays on a dress. Now we can design arbitrary shapes of uh, solar panel, like what I'm wearing here, which is a lotus shape laminated onto clothing. So one can charge their electronic devices as part of the outfit. We also made wearables that are not only for decoration, but also interactive and educational. Uh, these brooches, for example, are open source, reprogrammable, and can be used to help mothers keep their children by their side. It detects the distance when the child is running off or is uh, taken so the mother can be alerted. We do this on Kickstarter because we want to make fashion the same way as making new electronics where products are made on demand and there's little waste and pollution. In fact, by building my own brand, I got myself down a rabbit hole of discovering all the pain points and the ugly side of the fashion industry. It's a big industry worth $3 trillion, contributing to 2.3% of the global GDP. Unfortunately, it's also one of the largest polluters in the world. The industry is dominated by mass production for big brands. Every year, 30% of clothes produced are never sold. 10 orders of tens of billions of tons of clothing are sent to landfills and incinerators. The fashion industry produces 90 million tons of textile waste and 10% of global carbon footprint. The problem is well known to the industry. While everyone was talking about sustainability, the problem persisted year after year with no real solutions until COVID hit it really hard which from an environmental standpoint was actually a wake up call for many businesses. However, with the economy gradually opening up, we see the industry falling back to the old habit. At the same time, there are other pain points experienced by individuals involved in the fashion industry. Because of the mass production model, which does not support independent designers to create at small volume, it's very difficult to manufacture creative designs into products. The development method is manual with human errors every step of the way. It can take more than half a year to develop a new design and designers are forced to produce large quantities and play a, pay a lot of money upfront. Even normal clothes without electronics is already like this, let alone innovation around tech fashion. Manufacturing is dominated by mass, mass production, which does not support independent designers. The traditional industry that doesn't have the tools or mindset for rapid prototyping and production on demand. Most of these factories are in developing countries also, and workers are not working in very good conditions. With all that much energy producing, consumers still mostly only have the choice to pick among mass-produced, uncreative clothing. They're not personalized, and we as consumers have to fit our bodies into the sizes rather than the sizes made for us. Fashion brands try very hard to predict how much something would sell, but even with the best algorithms, brands end up with overstocks. So coming from a scientific background with semiconductor manufacturing experience, I couldn't help but wondering if we can apply some of the methodologies in making technology products to help the fashion industry break this negative cycle. That's why you see my own fashion brand uh, is carrying out on-demand production 
and making fashion open source. At this point, I can just, again, say, great, I got it figured out for my own brand. I can stop it here. But at the larger scale, there needs a solution that can solve all of these problems for the entire industry. I started a project at Microsoft two years, even before there was COVID. We are in an era with technologies that can finally satisfy the mass population, produce clothing on demand while reducing the waste and pollution. What we need is a complete ecosystem that allows designers to express designs digitally and get them manufactured rapidly only when consumers buy them. That requires tools for rapid prototyping, digital sampling, to automatically generate the fit for consumers, get direct consumer input of what they want with the latest computer vision and machine learning technologies. And contribute uh, and distributed uh, democratized manufacturing. We're working on this infrastructure solution like a corporate internal startup, collaborating with many partners in the fashion industry and basically recreating an ecosystem and infrastructure to change how this industry has been run for, for years, for 100 years. Um, and this itself would take years to accomplish. Then before the entire industry is changed to a sustainable supply chain model, fashion brands can continue to contribute positively to the society as easy as donations. In the case of my brand, as you saw earlier, my inspirations come from nature and science. It has been always the brand's mission to donate back to STEAM education and environmental protection. That's why the Kickstarter campaign if we reach the goal, we'll also be donating to these nonprofits. Being a maker, let me pursue a journey of turning creativity into productivity. It also let me realize the interconnections between many different fields. And when applying methodologies across the fields, they can positively enhance each other. Sciences are the study of nature, which itself is art. Technologies are based on science, which empower people to create better art. So thank you so much for listening.